Just a quick response to David Frum. He's the neocon speechwriter for George W. Bush, Mr. Axis of Evil. Well, he's added somebody to the Axis of Evil, Ludwig von Mises, the economist. He's very upset that conservatives are allegedly moving away from Milton Friedman and his views of the Great Depression and toward Ludwig von Mises and his views of the Great Depression. Now, two things to be said about this. First, this sounds very arcane and uninteresting, but I assure you this is extremely interesting, important, and revealing. But secondly, of course, this is not happening. Uh, you ask the vast majority of conservatives to identify who Ludwig von Mises is. Uh, you may as well be asking them about the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum physics. Uh, the so-called conservative movement, of course, has taught them nothing about any of the people they're supposed to know about. So most conservatives don't even know who Mises is. Now, what's the significance of this? Well, Mises and Friedman superficially had similar views of the Great Depression because both, both people blame the Federal Reserve for that catastrophe. But when you look more closely, you realize that they're actually saying totally opposite things. Mises would say that the Federal Reserve caused the Great Depression first by sowing the inflationary seeds of the collapse. That In the 1920s, we had a substantial inflation of the money supply and lowering of interest rates artificially, and this leads to a disfigured uh, structure of the economy that could not go on, could not be perpetuated, and ultimately you had the crash. So in other words, there was intervention into the economy by the Fed, and that led to an unsustainable configuration, and you had the crash. This is the Austrian theory of the business cycle, and I'll give you more information about that at the resource page at the end of the video. Friedman's view, to the contrary, was that the Fed didn't do enough. Mises' view was that it did too much. It intervened, and it, it, it caused the boom-bust cycle. Friedman's argument is that it didn't do enough. It didn't inflate enough. It didn't create enough money. That if only it had created enough money in the early 1930s, we could have gotten out of this depression. That the thing that caused the depression was a collapse in the money supply by about one-third. So he's arguing the Fed did not do enough. But in fact, the Fed did increase the monetary base from late 31 up through 1933. But there was nothing they could do about the fact that 9,000 banks had failed. People were pulling their money out of the banks. And the Fed's inflationary tricks don't work under those conditions. There's nothing more the Fed could do. Then we got FDIC, and that solved that problem. But the point is that when we look at the two views of the Depression, from basically won't tell you what caused 1929. There was never any explanation forthcoming from him. The Austrians would say it's because the Fed intervened in the first place. And then you got the Depression because the government gave you these rigid labor markets, made it hard for people to get hired, created all this uncertainty with all these spending programs and taxing programs and, and, and legal uncertainty. And that's why the Depression goes on as long as it does. But the Friedman slash from school thinks it's because the money supply fell. You had deflation, and that naturally causes a depression. But that's not true. Uh, as Atkinson and Kehoe showed in their article in 2004 in the American Economic Review, they looked at 100 years in 17 different countries. And they found that apart from the 1930s, there was absolutely no connection whatsoever between the phenomenon of deflation and depression. And that, to the contrary, you were much more likely to see depression associated with inflation. So this view of, of from has been pretty much demolished just on the basis of, of looking at the evidence. Now, if you want to get the classic view of the business cycle, you'll get Murray Rothbard and of his book called America's Great Depression. That's his classic study of what caused the Great Depression. And he argues with the Austrians that the Great Depression was not caused by the free market. It wasn't caused by cycles that just occur spontaneously in the market and have no real explanation but that it's always this intervention into the economy to push interest rates lower than they would otherwise be. And the conservative historian Paul Johnson makes copious reference to Rothbard's book, America's Great Depression, in his classic book, Modern Times. And in my resource page, I'll link you to where you can read Rothbard's book, a free copy of the fifth edition featuring a foreword by Paul Johnson. Uh, finally, uh, if we want to talk about who was clueless, because here, because uh, Frum says, I forgot to mention, this is the best part of the whole post. Frum says that the Austrians and Mises were totally clueless about the Great Depression. They weren't as sophisticated as Friedman and the Chicago people. But the fact is it was Mises who, in 1928, at a time when everybody was saying the business cycle has been tamed forever, we're never going to have booms and busts anymore, it was Mises who said, the bust is coming sooner or later. You cannot evade it. When you set it in motion, it cannot be avoided. This train has already left the station. Meanwhile, the guy Friedman calls the greatest economist the United States ever produced, Irving Fisher, was he was the one who was clueless. Fisher, like Friedman, looked at the 1920s and saw nothing wrong. He saw stable prices, so he thought, 
It's great. Monetary policy has been good. But we shouldn't have had stable prices in the 20s. Prices should have been falling because of productivity increases. But prices stayed stable because of all the inflation of the money supply, and then we've got all the distortions that that causes, according to the Austrians. Fisher missed all of this. And going into September 1929, a month before the crash, he says that stock prices have reached a permanently high plateau. And even well into October, he's still saying, I don't see there's going to be a general crash. I can't imagine this could happen. He loses two fortunes. He loses his own fortune. He invented the Rolodex. And he loses his sister-in-law's fortune. So in terms of who's clueless, I mean, David Frum, uh, heal thyself. In fact, uh, we think about the most recent crisis with housing and the financial crisis of 2008. Well, who called that? Was it the Friedmanites? Milton Friedman, shortly before his death, said that he thought Alan Greenspan had done a super job. Where are all the Chicago school people who predicted the current crisis? But yet it's the Austrians who are clueless. They were the ones who warned exactly about what was happening. In fact, not 100 yards from me right now is sitting Mark Thornton right in his office. Mark Thornton was talking in 2004 about the housing bubble, missed by almost everybody. So if you want to learn real economics and not the clueless variety, learn Austrian economics. And in particular, if you want to know about the real causes of the Great Depression, so you can learn real history, head over to my site, libertyclassroom.com, and in particular, to a page I've prepared to accompany this video. It's libertyclassroom.com slash depression, lowercase d. So Frum's post is why conservatives ditched Milton Friedman, and he's so sad about that. Well, if only, finally, conservatives would ditch David Frum.